What's up guys, DC here, welcoming you back to another episode of Wolf Lodge. On this episode, we start milling lumber and framing that front door. All right, guys, I just got done delimbing this section of tree and cutting it at a little over 12 feet. Our goal today is to get a 10 foot section of lumber. So I cut it at 12 feet to give myself a little bit of play here. Our first task today is to move this tree to the lumber mill. This tree sits about 500 feet away from where the lumber mill is. Now with no heavy machinery here on the property, let me show you the process we came up with for moving large pieces of timber like this. Okay, let me introduce you to a key piece of equipment here at Wolf Lodge. This is a capstan winch. What's unique about a capstan winch is that you can have a limited amount of line. Line comes in, gets wrapped around this drum, and then exits. That's key for trying to move timber large distances. The first thing I do when I use this winch is try to find a good pick point. I try to find nice, good living trees because we are going to be putting a lot of force on this winch and pick point. Next, I come over to the pulling end of the tree. Now, important concept to understand is how this front end of the tree is going to move across the ground. Let me introduce you to another piece of key equipment, the skidding cone. What this thing does is it goes over the front of the tree like this and it keeps the tree from getting hung up on obstacles. This winch has a 2,200 pound pulling force capacity. So what happens is 2,200 pounds of pulling force gets applied to the first line, ran through the snatch block, and 2,200 pounds of pulling force gets applied to the second line. That makes for a total of 4,400 pounds of pulling force at this point right here. Let me demonstrate this. So we take our snatch block here. So now we have to anchor our second line. Now an important thing to understand here on this second line is if we were to take this and just wrap it around a tree and just hook it to itself, we'd be creating a weak spot in the rope. So what we have to do is use a strap, wrap it around this tree and then hook up to it. And that eliminates that pressure point on that line. Okay, we have the second line hooked up to its tree, to the snatch block, and then the first line comes all the way over and gets hooked up to the winch. Let's see if this works.
nothing about those last couple hours was fun. Everything was fighting me from snow conditions to trying to put this thing up on the mill. Now yesterday I did some maintenance on this mill. I did an oil change, I did some track leveling, and I did some service to the blade guides. Now with any luck, this thing should start producing lumber again. Let's give it a shot. So for those of you who watched the last episode, I kept talking about 10 foot 2x6s I needed for the framing of that front door. Now I have to apologize, I don't know if it was the thousands of shovel scoops I had to make or the sun dehydrating me, but I completely forgot about the header that's needed for this door. So my goal here with this piece of timber is to get that header. This header is a 10 foot span, 12 by six. So I did some rough mapping already and I think I can get two 12 by sixes out of this piece of timber. One 12 by six is gonna go for the header of that front door and a second one is gonna get saved for later when we build the deck. I really want to spend some time explaining the process I use to extracting dimensional lumber from pieces of timber just like this. But I'm coming to the realization I only have about two hours of sunlight left. So for now, I'm just going to work to get these 12 by 6s done and I promise I will spend a whole episode explaining the science and quite frankly, I think, art form behind milling. baby took a whole winter off but I still got it have you guys noticed how much snow has melted since the last episode <laughs> it's been warm Okay guys, I got my two 12 by sixes done. Now they're about an inch over in both vertically and horizontally. That is because I'm gonna give them a little bit of time to dry and then I'm gonna put them back on the mill and then mill them again to their final dimension. I think I got about a half hour of sunlight left. That's gonna give me enough time to clean up here. Now tomorrow, I think I got some guests showing up to help me start on that door. That's gonna be it for today. I'll catch you back here in the morning.
Good morning, guys. Day two here on this episode. Today's tasks. First, I want to remove this tarp. This tarp has protected this structure and closed off this void all winter long, and it has done a really good job of that. But it's time for it to come down in preparation to start framing the door in. Now, the frame for this door sits in this box. I want to remove it, lay it on the floor, assemble it, and that's going to give me my rough opening measurements that I need to start framing. Now, I believe I have some guests showing up today, so I might have to leave to go pick them up, but that's going to be some really good help for me over the next couple days. So let's get started. So I did some light cleaning, some organizing in here to make some room for laying out the frame for this door. And uh, let's start getting at it. Okay, we got 118 inch width on our frame. So if we have 118 inches, now the manufacturer calls for a three quarter inch gap on one side, three quarter inch gap on the other side for a total of inch and a half over our frame size. So our rough opening width is gonna be 119 and a half inches. Our height is 94 inches. So if the manufacturer calls for a three quarter inch gap at the top, three quarter inch gap at the bottom for a total of an inch and a half over, our rough opening height is gonna be 95 and a half inches. So I've been thinking a little bit about this. From the post to our rough opening, is only a five inch difference. So instead of messing with two by sixes in here, I'm just gonna make this one solid piece of wood, a five by six post. Just got a satellite text from our guests that are showing up today. They are on their way, let's go pick them up. Special guests have arrived. Woo! Oh. oh man. Charlie and Nate. Woo! River crossing! Yeah! Hour and a half hike starts now. <laughs> there we go, boy. <laughs> so this is normally where we park the vehicles in the summertime, and this is where the trail starts. So we got a one mile hike from here. But the good news is we got most of our elevation gain out of the way. Yeah, starting trail. 
Last leg. Home stretch, boys. Yeah. Almost there. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Oh, yeah. Hour and 15 minutes, guys. Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> Wolf Lodge welcomes you boys back. Oh, you back. <laughs> Dude. oh man. So Just be careful of that frame door frame. <laughs> so wall. There's gonna be a wall right here. Bedroom bed, maybe even a bunk bed, vertical ladder going to loft number one with a bed, kitchen with a full bar top right here. So open bar top right here, vertical, vertical ladder going into loft number two with a bed up there. Nothing above the living room. Sick. Holy. 10 foot by eight foot tall bifold door that accordions into itself to leaving this massive opening when the door is open. Three panels that size. Oh, man, a wall. <laughs> it's gonna be insane. So deck, deck going out this way. When the door is open, this whole space is open. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's gonna be a deck. Deck. Oh, how big? Like, uh, wow. Probably going out to that. Probably as wide for place? probably as wide as this middle section from that post to that post going out to that log, but then in the future, then in the future I can extend it mm -hmm. to the sides of the cabin. Mm -hmm. But like sub porches. But the main feature of this cabin is when this door is open, you're left with this entire space wide open out to a deck. Wow. It's gonna be insane. <laughs> So I just got these guys in just in time for the sunset. That's gonna be it for today. We're just gonna enjoy the evening, cook some dinner, and uh, get rested for tomorrow. Tomorrow, we start framing this bad boy and uh, see if we can't get a couple panels installed. We'll see you tomorrow. What's up guys, welcome back to another day here at Wolf Lodge. Today's objectives, to start framing the rough opening for the door, then install the frame that we assembled yesterday, and with any bit of luck, possibly even start getting some glass up. Now, with some good help on site over these next two days, I think we can get a lot done. So let's get started. I'm gonna start by getting the dimensions for the header that we need. So if you remember from yesterday, our rough opening height for the frame is 95 and a half inches. So I just marked 95 and a half inches from the bottom. So our header height dimension is 10 and three quarters. Okay, so here's the header that I milled a couple days ago. Now I strategically milled it oversize. That is because I wanna get it exposed to the elements, allow it to do a little bit of shrinking, moving if it wants to. And now that I have my official measurements for my rough opening, I can now mill this to its correct specs. No play here at Wolf Lodge. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> yeah, boy. All right, guys, our header's done. 
Next task is to start making jack studs. Okay, I'm getting my measurement for the jack studs. The opening is 129 and a half inches. Now our rough opening for the frame is 119 and a half inches. So that gives us a difference of 10 inches. If we split that in two for two jack studs, that gives us a measurement of the width for our jack stud at five inches. We got a width of five and a quarter. So the measurement for our jack studs dimensionally is five inches by five and a quarter. And that will fill up this complete void with wood with no gaps. <laughs> all right guys we got our header and our two jack studs made time to start framing this rough opening Woo! <laughs> 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 yep. perfect <laughs> those are fun huh yeah So when it comes to cutting large beams like this, you have several different options to get your straight cuts and angled cuts. Now you can buy a large beam saw, but those are really expensive. So what we came up with is this tool. And what this tool allows us to do is utilize a tool that we had already bought for tree work, the chainsaw. So you hook up the chainsaw to this apparatus and as you can see you can get any angled cut you want including your straight cuts your 90s which is what I'm gonna go for right here getting a nice clean 90 degree cut on this piece of timber so as you can see the chainsaw attaches to this guide and this guide runs up and down on this track this tool is produced by a company called Connecticut Post and Beam. And they're not a sponsor, no sponsors here at Wolf Lodge, but this tool has absolutely saved us time and money building Wolf Lodge. So we'll give them a shout out. So chainsaws do make a little bit of a rough cut, but sanding takes it right out and makes it nice and smooth.
Okay, anchor seal, another staple here. And what this stuff does is it prevents the timber from losing moisture out its ends too quickly. If a timber loses its moisture too quickly, it tends to crack. So this seals it up and prevents that from happening. So what I just did there was drill some pilot holes for some lag bolts. Now this header is ready to go up. Now I'm going to start working on some jack studs. Okay, we got our two jack studs and our header finished. I think we're ready to start framing. All right, we got the header and the jack studs installed, but unfortunately, the camera ran out of memory in the middle of all that. So, we're gonna try to get this frame over there and uh, we'll see if it fits, moment of truth. Got the bottom sill pan in. Just finished the frame install, just in the nick of time. Didn't get any glass installed today, but huge day, huge, huge day. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of celebrating tonight, and uh, I think we'll try to install a glass panel first thing tomorrow. Ow. Peace. So, I was worried so much about the door, thinking so much about the door. I didn't turn the camera on, but I'm still shaking. <laughs> None of that was caught, but it was an insane moment. Um, but as you can see, glass panel number one is on. <laughs> One of three, boys. Wow, well done. <sighs> you ain't my new chapter five years. Hell of a weekend, guys. Hell so of a sick. weekend. All right, guys, we are one panel away from reaching our dry in goal, a goal that we've been working towards for four years now. We're going to wait till next weekend to install that third panel because there have been some people on this project that this place would not exist without them, and they're going to be showing up next weekend. So we're gonna wait to install that third panel till they show up and we all celebrate together. If you guys enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss a future episode. And I'm DC saying we'll see you next time here at Wolf Lodge.